In BCA 2016 Volume 1, we have introduced some new concessions for farm buildings. This has come about because there have been cases of misclassification, where buildings that are more suitably classified as Class 7 or 8 are being classified as Class 10A because the provisions for Class 7 and 8 buildings are considered too onerous. During the project, we were told that developers would skip some councils and go to another council area because the building surveyor there is more lenient. Even if it meant that their trucks were travelling another 60 or 70 kilometres. There are plenty of buildings on farms which are adequately classified as Class 10A, like this example. But this isn't a Class 10A. This is a milking shed on a large modern dairy farm. There are employees in these buildings and processes are carried out for financial gain. It is appropriate for buildings like this one to contain more than what a Class 10 needs, which is basically nothing. But practically, it is difficult to provide everything that a Class 8 requires, like hydrant protection. This is where the new Deem to Satisfy concessions come in, which are found in a new part Part H3. This project was a quite tricky project because there are a wide variety of farm buildings used for a wide variety of purposes. The concessions that we came up with purposely apply to the majority of farm buildings that are built across Australia. It might be that you have a project on your desk which doesn't fit inside the new concessions. This doesn't mean that you must use the deem to satisfy it is possible to use a performance solution which takes into account the spe specific parameters of your project. The concessions that are included apply to buildings used for farming, on land used for farming, and that should be classified as Class 7 storage or Class 8 process. There are two levels of concessions reflecting the varying levels of hazards presented. The lower level is called a farm shed, and the higher level is called a farm building. A new defined term stipulates what a farm shed is. The main parameters are listed on this slide. It must be used for farming, and there is a new defined term indicating what farming is. So this is so the concessions are applied to buildings which they were designed for. In particular, a farm shed is generally not occupied in the same way that your garage isn't occupied. You do go in your garage, but it's not a habitable room. When people go into a farm shed, there are no more than two occupants. For example, this stock shelter used for rearing cattle could be a farm shed. It's single storey, it's less than 2,000 square metres, and people don't generally work in here except from time to time the farmer will come and change the hay and the feed. Farm sheds present a low hazard, so they have more generous concessions. A farm building has a higher level of hazard, so it does not have as many concessions as a farm shed. A new defined term stipulates what a farm building is. The main parameters are listed on this slide. Like a farm shed, a farm building must be used for farming, as defined so that the concessions are applied to buildings that are designed, they are designed for. Note that a farm building is generally occupied. Although a maximum density and a maximum number of occupants are set out. For example, this packing shed could be considered a farm building. A process occurs within, making it a class eight. People work here every day. However, there are less than eight occupants and no more than one occupant per 200 metres squared floor area. Other concessions that apply are listed on this slide. Egress. There are concessions for both farm buildings and farm sheds for certain egress provisions. Travel distance requirements of D1.4, D1.5 remain, however D110C doesn't apply. Otherwise, you would need a one metre wide path complete with steps or even ramps between your farm building in the middle of a paddock and the closest public road. Stairways. 
stairways can be installed to AS 1657 instead of Part D2 like the current concession for some plant rooms. Thresholds can be up to 700 millimetres tall. This may not seem a lot, but many sheds are provided with barrier around the edge to enable hosing down. Also grain bunkers are built with a large step to allow the grain to be piled in. Services and equipment. There are varying concessions for hydrants and hose reels depending on whether it's a farm building or a farm shed. We'll look at this in a moment. Lighting. There are concessions for lighting, which also extend to emergency lighting and illuminated exit signs, providing that non-illuminated exit signs are installed. Sanitary facilities. Farm sheds aren't occupied, so they don't need toilets. There are a few other concessions, however, these are the main ones. I'll briefly talk about services and equipment. Under the new provisions, Part E1 does not apply to farm sheds. A farm shed is, by definition, greater than 500 metres squared and class 7 or 8, so fire hydrants and hose reels would normally be required. The new provisions remove this requirement so long as some portable fire extinguishers are installed. A farm building more than 500 metres squared would normally require fire hose reels. However, like a farm shed, it's possible to include portable fire extinguishers instead. Also, a farm building more than 500 metres squared doesn't need a hydrant. However, it does need at least a water supply. It is possible to install a fire hydrant system. However, hydrant installation has been left as an option because there are some farm buildings which are close to mains water or a ring main has already been installed. Instead, there is an option to use what is called a water supply. A water supply must have at least 144,000 litre capacity and can be a tank, a dam, a river, a lake and any other thing. A single water supply can serve more than one building. However, it has to meet certain proximity requirements. The building must be within 60 metres of the water supply. So building A and building B here are fine. They are within 60 metres. Building C is within 60 metres, however, it has a problem. The second proximity requirement is that all parts of the building must be within 90 metres of the access point. This is to stop long, large buildings from being close enough to the water supply, but having parts too far away from it. So building C is within 60 metres, however, because it's a long building, it has parts more than 90 metres away and will need a closer water supply or another water supply to cover the end at the bottom of the slide. You'll be aware that AS2419.1 doesn't allow you to place a hydrant within 10 metres of a building it serves. There is also similar requirements for a water supply. It can't be within 10 metres of a building that it serves. This has been a brief overview of the new concessions and as mentioned earlier, they have been designed to meet the needs of the majority of farm sheds and buildings. If the new concessions don't accommodate your particular project, it is recommended that a performance solution be designed specifically for that project. Mm -hmm.